Seattle, Washington. Could almost be a Canadian city, right? Well, in some respects, the U.S. and Canada are still worlds apart. This is the Seattle Federal Courthouse, and this is where one Canadian activist will face serious charges for activities carried out in Canada. That is if the U.S. can get him extradited here. It's a case that potentially challenges sovereignty, our laws in Canada, and could sentence one Canadian citizen to life. Celebrate your freedom! His name is Mark Emery, and he has sold millions of marijuana seeds to the United States, which is illegal. But how has this guy become one of America's most wanted men? Why you? Well, first of all, it's because I'm really good at what I do. When you think of when I started 10 years ago, there was no legal medical marijuana, there was no legal hemp industry, pipes and bongs were illegal, books and magazines about marijuana were even banned when I started my crusade 10 years ago. And in that time, in just 10 years, not only have we moved public opinion from 26% to 57% to legalize marijuana in Canada, but we've got legal books and magazines that my money helped overturn the ban on those. We've got uh, pipes and bongs across Canada. We've got hemp stores in So you're too city. effective. I'm very the effective. Americans we've want got to shut yeah. hemp industry and we've got legal medical marijuana. Well, whether he's a dangerous drug dealer or a conscientious Canadian activist depends on which side of the fence you sit. Leading the extradition effort in the United States is Assistant District Attorney Todd Greenberg. He is the largest distributor of marijuana seeds into the United States that's known to U.S. law enforcement. Do you see this as a simple legal issue or are there politi political ramifications uh, to this? Well, to me, I look at it as a legal issue because I'm a prosecutor and that's what this case is about. Do you expect them to be extradited? I do. Would it become an issue between Canada and the United States? Speculate for me, if, if Canada doesn't extradite him. I can't comment on that. Is it ever an issue? I, I, I can't comment on that, I'm sorry. The fact remains that it is a law, you did break it, and we do have a treaty with the United States. Oh, yeah. And that's what the advocates of extradition are saying. And my response is that it's an unjust law, totally wrong. It totally persecutes people living a peaceful, honest lifestyle. No one who smokes marijuana or grows marijuana should ever go to jail for even an hour, let alone a day, month, year, or the rest of their life. But why take on the United States? Why play with fire so flagrantly? That's the source of the problem. The United States government has been waging this war against the marijuana people since the 1930s. They've managed to infect all the jurisdictions around the world so that in every country in the world, marijuana people are hunted down like animals. More people than ever before in the history of mankind are in jail today, in jails worldwide for marijuana. So the situation is getting worse and worse, and it's because the United States is exporting their evil ideology of the drug war to all these nations around the world. Okay, so here's Randy White, the conservative MP and the the official opposition's drug critic. How do you feel about sending a Canadian citizen who could sit in jail for life in the United States mm, on charges? Well, well, why is that extreme? Well, you're asking me how I feel about that. Would I feel any different on that if he were selling crystal meth? But he wasn't selling crystal meth. That's that's the point. The no, point. I mean, I think. Well, I think it. All. I think it is for a lot of people that that this this is something he's no one's gone to jail for in Canada ever. Yeah, no one's gone to jail for selling okay, seeds in okay, this country. Okay, so it's against the law in Canada, and no one has gone to jail. So therefore, he should be able to break the laws in the United States. That's what you're saying, and that, that is wrong. What harm has been created? Then there's Libby Davies, the NDP member of parliament and also an expert on drug policy. He broke the law. Well, he has not been charged with anything in Canada. This particular case has more to do with political pressure from the U.S. government uh, for their war on drugs. By calling me the number one drug trafficking organizational target in Canada, you know, they've created this fabulous image of me because Americans are going to see me on 60 Minutes, for example, and they're going to think, wow, if he's their number one guy, if he's their number one criminal, if he's as bad as it gets, this Mark Henry who gave away all his money and seems to be a very open, transparent, and decent guy who's never harmed me, if this is as bad as crime gets in Canada, I'm moving to Canada. This is about the Americans saying what you're doing to us is highly illegal in our country and we're not going to put up with it. Look at an American, for instance, where their, their gun laws are uh, a lot more liberal than, than ours are. Would we say, well, you know, you're probably allowed to do that in the United States. You can sell gun parts anywhere. Uh, so we should uh, allow it here in Canada too. 
It's the same thing on the other side of the re border, just in reverse. I'm hoping I can haunt people. So even in my death, I can haunt people to do the right thing, that they know that there's no possible explanation for putting people in jail who smoke marijuana when we let all the people who make alcohol, tobacco, cigarettes, prescription drugs, and all these things, none of those people ever go to jail as a consequence of their accident. None of those people who make guns go to jail. None of the people who make cars that go three times the legal speed limit and kill people every day in this country ever go to jail for making death machines on wheels, right? So the fact that they would send someone like me, when marijuana doesn't kill anybody, when I've never harmed anybody, to a sentence longer than you'd get if you were a multiple murder in Canada, I hope that haunts Canadians.